The first sci-fi movie, A Trip to the Moon, was created 119 years ago. Five years before that, in 1897, a Russian scientist living in a log cabin came up with an equation to calculate how much fuel rockets needed to reach a certain altitude. He called it the formula of aviation. We now call it the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation after his name, and it is one of the most important equations in astrophysics. The thing is, because rockets are constantly fighting against gravity and have to carry all of their fuel at once, they hold a seriously large amount of fuel. Over 90% of a rocket's weight is fuel. A normal car is only about 4% fuel. Jet airplane is about fuel. Also, the required amount of fuel increases exponentially as more weight is added. And so this is how we calculate it. The weight of the rocket, including the fuel, is m for mass, and the velocity of the rocket, which is the speed plus direction, is v. When we multiply the mass and the velocity, we get the momentum, which in this case would be zero. Now when the rocket expels a bit of that fuel out the back, it gets pushed a bit in the other direction. Like how Newton's third law of motion says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the fuel is expelled at the velocity v exhaust for velocity of exhaust, and it exerts that force on the rocket as well. The mass of the expelled fuel is negative delta m. Since delta m is the final mass minus the original mass, it's a negative number. So we add the negative sign to make it positive. Once we remove that from the original mass, the mass of the rocket becomes m plus delta m. Now, according to the law of conservation of linear momentum, the total momentum of the system before the launch is equal to the total momentum during the launch, because the momentum of the fuel cancels out the momentum of the rocket. After a bit of multiplication and rearranging, we get this neat equation. It tells us what delta v is, which is the change in velocity that a spacecraft can get by using up all of its fuel. And we're done. No, we're not. See, this equation only shows us a single change in mass and velocity, as if a rocket dumped all of its fuel at once and gained all of the velocity at once. But rockets have a constant change in mass and velocity, as the weight gets lighter and the speed gets faster. To calculate this constant change, we need to integrate it. Splitting this change an infinite amount of times is what integration does. So we could input whatever we want to get a corresponding output. The final form of the equation tells us how much fuel do you need to carry a rocket of this mass to this velocity. This equation is so simple yet so vital that it has been used in every single rocket launch in history. So the next time you watch a rocket launch on TV, remember, this 120 year old equation is the one that started it all.